Welcome to the Divine Paradigm Symposium, revealing universal pathways to joyful living. Thank you for joining us. I'm Gail Hogue. And I'm Gregory Hogue. And together, we have been researching and developing sacred geometry technologies for over 36 years to support the evolving consciousness of humanity and all life on the planet. We felt the inner call to bring together a collaboration of poignant dialogues with other visionary leaders whose work we love and have followed for many years. We will explore their insights and knowledge in these conversations to bring inspiration and clarity for navigating this amazing time. As we emerge from the pattern interrupt of COVID and challenges of the past year, deep-seated inner knowing will bring us forward into something new and perhaps unpredictable. Our intent is to support you on your path forward into a life of fulfillment. We have some very penetrating interviews with this series. Each one will offer you something of extraordinary value. So stay tuned each day for the next three weeks to absorb all you can from each of these amazing people. Every program will be available for 48 hours and you can watch all the replays on Sunday. So let's get started. I am so, so thrilled to introduce you to a new, very dear friend, and her name is Janet Gray Atwood, and she is the co-author of the New York Times bestseller, The Passion Test, The Effortless Path to Discovering Your Life Purpose and Your Hidden Riches, Unleashing the Power of Ritual to Create a Life of Meaning and Purpose. As an expert on what it takes to live a passionate life, and she does, she has presented her programs as a featured speaker to hundreds of thousands of people around the world, including the Dalai Lama, Sir Richard Branson, Dr. John Gray, Jack Canfield, Lisa Nichols, Stephen Covey, Brenda, Brendan Burchard, and others. Janet has taken hundreds of thousands of people through the passion test process all over the world. Janet is the co-founder of the Passion Test Certification Program, with, which has over 4,000 certified facilitators in over 70 countries. Janet is also the co-founder of the Passion Test for Business and the Mastery of Self-Love Program. Janet is a teacher of Transcendental Meditation and a facilitator of the work of Byron Katie. For her ongoing work with the homeless and kids in lockdown detention centers, Janet received the highest award for service from the President of the United States, President's Volunteer Service Award. Janet received the World Peace Flame Award from the Life Foundation International for her work in promoting peace. In 2013, Janet was knighted by the Order of the Orthodox Knights of St. John in recognition of her commitment to the healing of humanity. In 2016, Janet received the Transformational Leadership Council Award for her excellence in leadership. Janet presently lives in the beautiful place of Fairfield, <laughs> Iowa. And you can find out more about her on the page and at thepassiontest.com. <sighs> Janet. Thank you for being here. You guys, you were so generous. You know, the hour is almost over after that long bio. <laughs> well, you have been doing so much. I know you're just constantly traveling, going everywhere around the world, except last year in 2020, it was a sudden shift for all of us. And what was happening for you last year with the COVID shutdown? Yeah, great question. Well, it started to, you know, I started to feel it when I was in India. I was speaking at the International Yoga Festival with people like Sadhvi Bhagwati and Bruce Lipton. And right when I left, and I was also, um, I also had a group of people that were on a tour with me. 
we were uh, going to a hotel in Delhi and became aware things were different. You know, that things were really starting to shift, not yet in the Himalayas where I was at the yoga festival. You know, we were just talking about it, but in Delhi, we could feel it. The hotel felt different. People felt different. People were distancing. And then I went to um, Koh Samui, Thailand, where I did a, an advanced course. And while I was there, I had to renew my visa. And when I went to renew my visa, yeah, that's all everybody in that visa room was talking about because there were all these foreigners there trying to re renew their visa. And my intuition just screamed at me, time to go, time to go. I'm in the middle of a course. And um, I was with another one of my students from Australia. And I said, you know, Jamie, don't you think, don't you think maybe we ought to regroup online? And he goes, yeah, I really do. So I, we went back to, to our um we had this beautiful condo on the beach in Kosamui. And I sat everybody down and I said, what do you guys think? And they all went, uh-uh, time to go. So we all, we all decided, okay, we're all gonna go back you know, all these people to these destinations. And two weeks later, we would regroup online. And I really actually wanted to go back to Italy because that's where I had been living, but Italy was locked. And then I thought, well, I'll go back to my, my Denmark house. Denmark was locked and my visa had expired. And I'm like, okay, where am I going to go? And it ended up to come to Fairfield, Iowa, your very, very favorite vacation spot. I didn't even have a place to live when I'm at the airport in Thailand. I'm calling my best friend, my ex-husband, Chris Atwood, is my very best friend. We haven't been married for 23 years, but we always stayed best friends. And I said, Chris, find me a place to live. And when I got here... Uh, it was so interesting. I'm driving in the cornfields and I find this big hotel in the middle of nowhere. That's where Chris had booked me. And um, I woke up the next morning and looked at my, I, I was just looking at my computer. I was really jet lagged. It was probably the next afternoon when I was really doing it. And I realized my whole year was canceled. It got canceled. Everything was canceled. You know, I mean, I'm getting all these emails, cancel, 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 China, China, Japan. And I had huge courses scheduled, huge. And I am like, wait a minute. And honestly, I had to take a, a huge breath in. And, and, and I actually, I sat there and I, I for, for a minute, I was the non-transformational leader, really. I, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I was so tired. You know, fatigue really cuts into the ability to really keep it, you know, solidly together. And, and I just sat there and I just, I just went, whoa, you know, wow, I'm like close to the street. You know, I could really feel it. I could feel it because it was so big of a, of a kaboom. It was like a domino effect watching all of the every day. And then every day it continued. You know, that event was canceled, that event was canceled, that event was canceled until they were all canceled. And I'm like, all right, you know, and, and really it took me out at first. And then I realized, I, I sat there and I went, what would you tell your students to do? And I always talk about 80% of what's going on is unseen. And that, you know, the, the power is within the self, not outside. The power is not outside here in the relative. Everything's always changing. Everything's changing. But inside, inside, it's the non-changing. And I thought, I've got to really go in. I've got to really collapse on the self. And I really, I, 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 I saw that the purpose of all of this lockdown around the world that was happening was nature. You know, I mean, think about it. You can't blame the government. You can't blame big farming. You can't blame the big corporations. I mean, you can, but, you know, what, what do you get for it? You get to be depressed and bummed. But who's really doing it? You know, what is the highest thought? And so I just went right to the highest thought. It's that all of us, and, and me included, needed to be, be more back on the self, back on the self to know myself deeply, even deeper than I thought I had. I'm out teaching courses on self-love, but I went, yeah, okay, I get it. I get this. And I thought of everything, you know, what were all the practices that I love to do that really put me in a centered place? 
And I just, I, I made my, and I, I really did. I got a postcard and I made myself my spiritual daily schedule of just being inside to really get myself super strong because I knew that manifestation happens from within. You know, there were more millionaires birthed during the, um, you know, during the times when we, when, when we had had all of these shutdowns before of all the businesses, the Great Depression, more millionaires and billionaires were birthed. Why? Because there were those few that knew. You know, you can think all day long. What were people starting to do? I mean, the atmosphere, you could cut it with a, lot, with a knife. You still can. Of fear. So at all of us at every moment, we have a choice. I mean, we have a choice. And the choice is, Am I creating the world I choose to create or am I creating the world I don't choose to create? And what I saw and my here, my brother, I have to use my brother, Johnny, as an example, because he's so in it. You know, he was on the TV 24 seven. I mean, 24 seven. And if you're watching the news 24 seven, that's what you get. And you get to be depressed and you get to be afraid and you get to want to control because why? Because, because that's what TV does, right? Especially our wonderful news these days. And I said, okay, you guys, you know, Janet, come on, you know, you've got to just put yourself inside and just, you know, gather all of your strengths so that you can shift this whole business of yours and turn it around. I had the best year I've had in years. I've had the best year I've had in years. And, and what was so beautiful was I haven't stopped living like that. You know, what I realized was that was the point. The point was to understand at an even deeper level that we are powerful and that, that everything. Now, I had always said it, but, you know, when you're faced, one of the things that I always talk about in the passion test is whenever you're faced with a choice, a decision, or an opportunity, choose in favor of your passion. Well, what was my passion? And what is my passion? To be of service to humanity. So how can I be of greater service to humanity? By being the light that I am, by being the, the source of love that I was birthed as, by, by really getting rid of any debris that is blocking me from being able to be of service. And it's not just for me, it's everybody. It's all of us. That's why, that's why this is happening to all of us. And we all and all of you listening, every moment we're having a choice, you know, do I want to dumb down, numb down, or do I want to use my tools that I know will center me and bring me back to self? Every tool that Gail and Gregory use, I'm sure, is to bring you back to the truth of who you really are because the outside world will throw us. You know, Janet, I, I love what happened with you and, and this is so true for us as well. We also had the best year. We also went first into that place of, oh my gosh, what do you do? It's like, like whoa. And then, you know, I think what overtook all of us after we, you know, dealt with how are we gonna, how are we gonna survive this mess? To wait a minute, what is the service that I am really here for? Because that's what we've been doing all these years. And now was an opportunity to be ultra creative and co-creative and go into a whole new mode and go, wait a minute, okay, so the way that it was before is gone. It's gone. Don't even try to reconstruct that. What can work now to serve people in the best way that we possibly can? Because that's what we've all been doing all these years. And so it was, yeah, that, it, it was a passion test for us to, to all get to that next place of going, what else would work better? And fortunately, there are some monumental tools that we were able to hook into that made a huge difference. And, you know, something that really um, impassioned us was that we realized that there were so many people out there that really wanted what we were, what we had, what we're teaching, 
how we're supporting people. They, you know, there was that inner calling inside that went, wait a minute, because this is such a time in lockdown to be self-reflective and do that inner work and have the time to meditate that perhaps, you know, people didn't spend that same kind of time before. They really, really needed all these tools and all the, you know, the, the ways of getting back on target. So for you, how did you come back into reaching out, not only to the people that have been following you, but I'm sure you were reaching out to a lot of people that hadn't followed you before. What did you do, Janet? Well, I did a number of things. You know, one of the things first, as I said, I use myself as my own test tube. And I thought of, okay, you know, I'll, I always do my PM every day, twice a day. But what else, what else can really, what else matters? And what I, what I really know to be true is every moment matters. Every moment matters. So I was, some, I was seriously vigilant on one of the things that is in the Vedas is through will, meditation, prayer, and yagya. That's rituals. Through will, that's the mind. Through will, meditation, prayer, and yagya, one can change the course of time. And so I just amped everything up. You know, I became super vigilant about cancel, you know, if, if I heard anything that wasn't serving me in this mind of mine, I didn't entertain it. I didn't create this negative neural pathway. I was just like, no, you know, and, I, and, and as I teach self-love, one of the things that I always told my students is be kind to you. So I was just like, ultra what do I need today what more do I need today what more do I I need today because I realize that as you treat you you treat everyone how do you if you want to be of greatest service to humanity love yourself deeply love yourself deeply so you can go out and spread love you can only spread love when you're loved so then I also um I, I thought okay you know like what do I love to do I'm a big fan of David Pramal and Mitten I love to chant and chanting Mitten, one time I was interviewing them and he said, it's cleansing, clean, sing, clean, sing. What are you doing? You're cleansing all of the impurities out of your physiology through singing these high vibration chants. And so I was Hanumanin Chalisa all day long because that's one of the most powerful chants there is to, to, to just really center oneself. And, uh, you know, lots of other ones, um, sending, sending healing out to the world through a beautiful chant called Odd Gray, which is a, a, which is a distance chant to distance, sending distance of love and healing to others that, you know, are, are having a challenging time. So I was really immersed in doing pranayama, you know, deep, deep pranayama, all these different pranayama techniques that I knew of. So through will, watching my mind, meditation, prayer, I, you know, my day was a prayer. My day was a prayer of gratitude. You know, one of the things that we can do is we can say, please, God, give me this, give me this, give me this. But, but, but true prayer is taking a look in every moment of, you know, what's working for me? Where, where are the gifts? And I mean, everyone right now, look around your room. It's it's everywhere, everywhere. And, and all of these different practices, what do they do? They just, they just remove the clouds of doubt. They remove the clouds of ignorance. They remove the clouds of illusion. The illusion that something's happening to me, not for me. You know, the sun is always there. The sun is always shining. But sometimes the clouds come. And so these practices, what they do is they remove the, they remove the block of that illusion that the sun's not there. You know, and the highest thought is everything's happening for me. So to really do all of these practices, what it does is it gets rid of all of these clouds. So automatically you're seeing, oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's not, it's not a, a, a mood making. It's not mood making at all. It's really just, just really using the depth of you to really work with all of nature that's always giving all the time. We're always being loved. It's just a notice. And then I did all, you know, my whole day was a ritual. Ritual, I, I wrote a whole book, Your Hidden Riches, 
one of the ones that you mentioned became a bestseller. You know, what, what we say in, in, in Your Hidden Riches is that rituals are those different things that you do on a regular basis that bring more meaning and purpose to your life. So my whole day was nothing but a ritual. If I went on a walk, I didn't just walk. If I went on a walk, I was either chanting or, or in gratitude to, to nature for, for what I was able to have. You know, just every moment was, was used to, to just really remove that illusion that something was happening to me, that life wasn't a gift. And so then I thought, God, this is really good. I, you know, the biggest find, Gail, what, the biggest find, you guys, was that I realized, okay, if I lose everything, it doesn't matter. I lose nothing. I'm higher than a kite. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so centered. I'm so filled with bliss. What do I need? You know, I, I, everything had kind of been stripped away. And, and there wasn't anything that, that really was needed that I didn't already have access to which was huge, which when, when you have that realization, you take away the fear, what's fear, false evidence appearing real. And it was like, okay, you know, let it come, God, whatever, you know, whatever you want me to experience in this lifetime, go ahead, bring it on. It's okay, bring it on. And uh, that's why I said, I'm still continuing on these rituals because it, why not? You know, why not? You, we can either be part of, of, I would say, probably 90% of the human beings on this planet right now that are scared to death and need, need support, or we can be the 10% that are out there supporting. And that's a choice. And that's a choice. And every moment is a choice. How do you want to do? And it takes, and it takes vigilant. You know, sometimes you have to say, I always tell people in the passion test, don't think that living a passionate life is just so easy. It's not. You have choices. You have to decide. And sometimes you have to say, darn, I'm not, I can't, I, okay, I got to say no to that so I can, and, and yes to this. And, and it's just the way it is. And sometimes you have to really, really do what I call the icky work. You know, you might be super depressed and, and many people, what do they want to do? They want to numb down. So instead of handling what's going on here and really looking at it and going in and using it for my own self-evolution, I'm going to just take that bottle of wine because it's a much faster fix, but we know it doesn't fix. So this is what my practice has been. And so then I decided mantras, mudras, and meditation. I created this whole course and put it online and got hundreds of people on it. And, you know, and I just... Gave them everything I was doing. I got to do more of it, only I got to do it with a big group, That's which fun. was so fun. And then I thought, oh my God, I really, this is really fun. What else do I love to do? Eliminating fear, creating wealth. It's because, because you see, and you two know this, every moment is abundant. Every moment is, we are always being gifted every moment. And so I thought, okay. What gets in the way of our abundance? It's only our fear. Again, it's just the fear that blocks it. It's a huge, gigantic brick wall to our abundance. So that, I, that was the next thing I created. And, you know, what I always told my students was, and then I'll, and then I'll let, you, let you talk if you have <laughs> heard you. I get off on this tangent, blah, 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 download, download, is, uh, you know, there's no one out there. Everyone is just a projection of yourself. So when you're teaching, why do the transformational leaders, why are transformational leaders, why do they become passionate about what they do? They become passionate because they become better. They become better because there's no one out there. So every time I'm sharing with other people, who am I really sharing to? I'm the one. And that's why that beautiful saying, the teacher always learns the most is really true. It's not just a beautiful saying. It's really, really true. So, so this has been my practice. And I, then I developed even more mastery of self-love, which is, is one of my pinnacle programs now. And um, rest is history. And it's just been, I, I know this sounds weird. And I even had COVID um, just last month that it's been my COVID vacation. 
it's been lovely to to regroup and and really share with others that you know no matter what happens it's all a gift and and let me show you why let me give you some real practical tools let me teach you how to reframe what's going what you think is is your what does Byron Katie call it? She says terrorism of the mind so that you can, you can really see and be on your knees of gratitude for every single moment that is happening for you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're both so excited to have this kind of a reflection. It's like, what a powerful time of change, you know, whenever the world or the environment is going through something this dramatic, we all on that deepest level realize there's opportunity here. And what an incredible gift. I mean, your whole life went deeper. Your whole practice of what you're sharing with others, your teaching. So you're a transformed teacher because of the gift of the COVID vacation. And yeah. so um, I know we resonate with this kind of view so deeply. And you have a gift that you want to share with everyone. Um, I know a free gift for just coming in and watching this. So could you share a little bit about what that free gift is in working with love? Yeah, you know, I was in um, Israel some years back and I started to get these little downloads. I had heard Byron Katie, who's one of my great teachers. I just love Byron Katie, who has the, pro the process to undo limiting beliefs called the work. I had heard her say one time, I want for you what you want for you. And then, you know, it was just, a, it was like, I, it, you know, it just went away with her. But with me, it was one of those defining moments. It was kaboom. I want for you what you want for you. Yeah, that's unconditional love. That is true unconditional love. You know, I, I want for you, honey, let me help you pack your bags. You know, I want for you what you want for you. And what I realized is that all control comes out of fear. And that to truly let go and to truly want for the other what they want, everybody is served. Everyone is served. Mm -hmm. And only 100% of the time. And my relationship with my ex-husband, here, here, sidebar to the sidebar to the sidebar. Right now, uh, my ex-husband and his wife, Doris, and her mother, Uma, who's 84, and their three kids, who I'm the godmother of, Sophie, who's... Sophie is 13, Tiana is 10, and Chocho is seven, and their best friend, Carlotta, who's 17, have all descended on my condo. I have, and we have a condo downstairs, and they all came from Germany just three weeks ago to be together. You know, I don't just talk about these tools that I use. We live these tools. I want for you what you want for you. And what I, what I love about, and so for all of you, I'm giving you these, these wonderful downloads. I call them self-love haikus because they're just little snippets of how to be unconditionally loving. And what does it mean? And, and, they're, and I call them meditations because what, what I see people doing and they, they tell me all the time, oh my God, I did, you know, I listened to these for 30 days, my whole life changed, is just sit in a very meditative state. And I'm, I'm less of the passion test and more of the soft self-love. I want for you what you want for you because, and then just start to share this, wonderful knowledge. And when I started downloading it in Israel, which was really fun, um, these people came from this organization called the Mentors Channel to take me out to uh, lunch. And I'm sitting at the table and I'm, I'd written maybe three of them. And I, I said, hey, Duran, you want to hear one of my one of my little haikus that I just wrote? And so I, I shared it with he and his wife and his wife goes, oh, my God, Duran, we've got to have that for our program. Now, Mentors Channels is huge. They have, they have like over 2 million people. And they looked at me and they said, could you create 
I think they said 25 of them in the next three days. <laughs> oh yeah. So I'm driving along. I, you know, where I'm I'm in a train. I'm where I'm in a taxi. I'm like taking a break from a program I'm giving. And I'm writing these things. They're just coming out of me. I want for you what you want for you. And um, it became this whole program, which I'm now gifting to your community. Because when you, when you asked me the other day, what would be a great gift? Well, look at you too. I mean, who are you really? What's the highest vibration? What's the highest thought? It's pure love. Love is, love is the greatest healer of all. And that's what you stand for. You are pure, unadulterated, just loving human beings, just loving kindness. And when you said what gift I didn't even, like, it was like out of my mouth in two seconds because it was so obvious what you only attract what you are. You always attract. So your community, I'm so honored to be able to have this moment with you because I know your community is just a reflection of you, which is pure love. So I thought what better gift to give than, I, than this meditations on love. So that's the gift. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to talk more about that pure love. And I want to talk about it from an energetic perspective. Let's play with this. Because as we all know, everything is energy. And something that is so profound about love is that it unleashes that pure creative energy. And when we're really in a loving state, I believe that that's when we are fully connected. We're connected with all that is, call it spirit, source, God, whatever you want. But those connections are so important. And something that, that I found during this past year and a half is that because the entire world got quiet. I mean, even the skies in Beijing and in Delhi cleared up and got blue instead of gray because people were staying put. <laughs> there were so many miracles and each individual had the choice, the opportunity to also go quiet and connect. And in those connections, find more love, find more self-love, find more love for others, find a way to serve, find a way to give, find a way to heal. There was just such an abundance of that experience. So I feel like the universe was blessing us with so much pure energy to get creative with. And um, so I would love to just, you know, have you share how that energy was feeling to you and how you, you know, how you really propelled yourself to another level from that pure energy level. You know, one of the things, Gail, is to understand that Love brings up anything unlike itself to be healed. Mm -hmm. Love is the highest vibration on the planet. And love brings up anything unlike itself to be healed. And I always use the three month experience. Uh, think about when you meet someone new. At first you're locked in this love bubble and oh God, my love, I love you. I love you, my love, 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 love. Me too, everything you do is so cute. How you brush your teeth is cute. How you, you know, how you just like chew your popcorn really loud is cute. Everything's so cute. And about the third month, all of those things stop being so cute. Have you ever noticed? They're not as cute for many people, right? And and many people, and what? So let's look at let's look at what's going on in a very practical way. How um, the statistics to stay married aren't that great anymore. Mm -hmm. Why? Because love brings up anything unlike itself to be healed. So you meet, you you meet, you have this divine connection, this beautiful love. And then what happens, and most people don't even understand what's going on, 
is that that love starts to purify anything that isn't love within the self. And then when, so it has to come out. It likes it, it's a, a thorn. It takes a thorn to remove a thorn. And what happens then is that the awareness starts to see differently. It's all of a sudden there are the clouds blocking the sun, as I was talking about before. So, and all of a sudden it's like, I don't, man, I don't know if I like that. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. And, and we put it outside of ourselves and start projecting onto someone else energetically. And then what happens is, well, what happens to many people is, you know, when you keep hitting on someone after a while, right? After a while, you just start to break away that love. Instead of bringing you together, you separate. And if people really understood that there are no mistakes in the universe, how do you know you're, you're supposed to be with the one you're with until you're not? Well, there you are, you are. So as long as you are, as long as you are, use that person so that you can see yourself deeply, see yourself deeply. And, you know, I have this practice, it's in the, in the, uh, mastering a self-love program when I'm describing what self-love is self-love is acceptance acceptance of what it's not about getting to that place where you're perfect nobody even likes perfect perfect boring self-love is about allowing yourself to be who you are in every moment knowing that who you are in every moment is who you're supposed to be how do you know well that's who you are in the story anything other than that is terrorism Anything other than that is terrorism of the mind. And notice, you know, you can either like accept where you're at, accept, accept this face, accept this hair, ex even, and especially getting older. I mean, that's really a fun thing to practice self-love, right? Ex ex accept this little face as it wants to go and let it be okay. Or you can go, God, I hate that. Why don't I leave? Why don't I size? six anymore why you know why what's wrong with me I mean god look at what, do I, what what can I do about this I mean you know and then all of your attention is outward 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 instead of instead of really what is acceptance accept it's all about self-love self-esteem self-empowerment it's all about the self and so I have this practice called the projection exercise and I say to everyone, and all of you can do this, write down five things that you love about someone, just you love about someone. So I'll give you an example. I'll do it with Chris Atwood. He's my ex-husband. Now, I love him so much. He is the most, okay, one word, sweet, kind, generous, mm, loving, and spiritual, he's so spiritual, he's just a walking spiritual human being. You know, so all of you right, right now, listening, do this. You'll get to see what I'm talking about and you'll get a real experience of what it's like to project. So write five things down of that person when you're loving them. Oh, I love them, one word and write it down. And then I'm not gonna have you guys do it because it puts you on the hot spot. I'll do it. I'll put me on the hot spot. So now I want you, after you've written the five things that you love about that person, I want you to write the five things that really, when they are not who you want them to be. And we all know, Gail, I want you to be honest. Are there ever any moments when your dear beloved, you feel like, oh, oh come on. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because why? Because, well, you'll see why. All right, so I'll think of Chris Atwood. What is he? Oh man, sometimes he can be so intense Sometimes he can, oh, what can he be? He's intense. Okay, stubborn. He's, um, he can be, he can be a little selfish. Um, now, this is my best friend of the whole world. Look at, I'm just like totally slamming him. Intense, stubborn, selfish. Um, what else can he be? He can be arrogant. Yeah, arrogant. And, uh, yeah, not give, oh, you'll love this one. Not give me a word, not let, let me in, right? In a conversation. All right, so and I want all like of you. To talk. <laughs> what did you say? I'm, I'm teasing. I'm saying, and you do love to share. 
Yeah, and- exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Don't let me not share. Anyway. All right. So I want all of you now, instead of saying that person's name, he's so or she is, I want you to put your name there. So here's how it works. I said, Chris is so sweet. Am I sweet? Yeah. Sometimes I am so sweet. You should see me with my godchildren. God, I'm so sweet. Am I kind? Yep. Am I generous? Super. I am. I am. I know who I am. Am I loving? Oh, yeah. I I can love it. I don't even have a stranger in my life. And am I spiritual? Well, I feel like I am, you know, and now I get to look at Chris in the other ways. Can I be intense? Oh my God. You two know that. All right. Can I be stubborn? Uh Uh-huh. Yep. Look out. Can I be selfish sometimes? Yep. I'm going to eat the rest of that dessert. Okay. Um, Arrogant? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I can. I can find it. As a matter of fact, there's nothing I can't find on this list. Because why? Because, you know, what do we do? We project outward, not what what we are. That's not who I am. That's who I think I am. Some That's where my judgments are about me. So look at that list of the five things you wrote about the other person that you're not when you don't love them. That's what you aren't loving yourself, not being accepting of yourself. Now, sometimes can I be intense? Yeah. So what? Sometimes I can. And guess what? It gets a lot of things done. Can I be stubborn? Yeah. And I need to be stubborn because how do I know? Well, I am. I'm not the general manager of the universe. I just am sometimes. So all of this really self-love and is energetically, Gail, I call it energetically accepting of who you are at every moment, not just when I'm sweet, when I'm kind, when I'm loving, when I'm generous. No, it's also, it's, you know, it's okay. It's okay that you are that way and do you're not. And if it bothers you, then what you're going to do, if you're bothered about aspects of you, if you don't send love to those aspects of you that you feel are the icky parts of you, then you're going to project it onto those you love. And those you and those that even you don't even know. And that's what we do. And that's how we separate ourselves. And that's how the world is the way it is right now. It's this world of separation. It's a big, huge, separate world. Because why? Because they aren't like Gail and Gregory. They don't understand that I meet no one but me. That the world is as you are. So if you if you have a desire to to really and and I only this is my prayer that all of us we're we're this cosmic love army and that together we can really start to understand that you know I, every moment every moment is happening to me so if I'm not loving something let me back up and look again what about myself am I judging now let me be kind to me because as I'm kind to me I'm kind to everyone. And next time that person comes along, that that is that mirror, the more kind I am about to me, about me, the more accepting I'll be of them. It doesn't work any other way. So, Gail, there's my spiel on energy and love. I love it. I love it, Janet. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's so important right now because, you know, I believe that we are making a leap from the ego, from the I to the we. Yeah. How do we get together into this unity? Because, you know, from a spiritual perspective, we know that all is one. And what an amazing thing is possible if this oneness is is self-reflective, if this oneness is ready to see how we project and it's really about us you know what about this oneness oneness when we're really loving ourselves and then we can really have a oneness of love you know that's like i think we're really heading into some very very profound times and that's why we needed a big i think we're already in those times (laughs) a big lockdown a big shift it's like we had to be sent to our rooms literally and in order to come back together because here you know we thought oh COVID's almost fine we're going to be able to get back to you know all the things that we were doing and blah 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 
But it was like, no, not ready yet. There's still work to be done. And I think the universe is absolutely so brilliant and amazing. And I'm so grateful for the way the universe conducts itself because it's, <laughs> it's just profound. And so if we're not quite ready to come back together, there must be some more work to do. There must be some more love that we're capable of, of really finding for ourselves and each other. So that I, I really think, you know, think about all the people that you've wanted to change your husband and everyone else. I mean, we all do. And notice how it's hopeless. And we, we can't change anyone, but what we can be is we can be the best Janet that I can be. And until I am, that's, that's my practice. That's my everyday practice. So that I can just go out and, and spread loving kindness and I don't have to try. It's not a strain. It's who I'm being. And it's who I'm being in every moment. And I think of all the practices that I've done uh, what do I do? What do I really, really put my attention on? Well, number one, transcendental meditation. What does it do? It's all about going within. Um, the work of Byron Katie, self-inquiry. What does it do? It's all about going in. Ho'oponopono. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. What's that about? It's Ho'oponopono. Many people have it all wrong. Ho'oponopono is the Hawaiian prayer of forgiveness that... You don't say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you to someone outside of yourself. What you're doing is you're saying to yourself, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you for seeing anyone as anything less than whole, complete and and light and love. See, that's my consciousness that's seeing that separation. So I'm the one I'm the one that needs to re to to realign my energy. You know, what is, what is chanting, cleansing, cleaning, cleaning inside, going in? Every single practice that I've seen that has any value whatsoever works on the subtle energy of the body. Every single one, every single one. Some are more powerful than others. And, and, and you know, what I tell everybody, come, you know, come be with me. Let me share with you my cosmic toolbox so that you can have these amazing tools, not just for now, and, and one of your, your tools, I'm, I'm wearing them right now, are in my cosmic toolbox, not just you know for right now, but forever. These are forever. These are for, for the rest of my life. I'm talking about creating a lifestyle change, inspiring transformation through love and service to humanity by being the very best you possible. And that that's doable, but trying to change someone else so you'll be happier. Notice that's that's uh, that's like more than you can chew. Uh-uh, it doesn't work that way. So there you have it. Oh uh, boy. Um, we so love playing with you. It's, <laughs> it's just such a rich field that we're all out there in you know the field of the cosmos and so life has really shifted deeply for you in this last year and beautifully and so what is it going to be like going forward is it going to be a different program than traveling all around the world as much as <laughs> done in the past how i are wish you shifting <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the general manager of the universe, so I can't really tell you. And um, I, I love Vedic astrology. Vedic astrology is very exact. As a matter of fact, for my chart, you know, what they ask you is they ask you your birth time, where you were born, the city you were born in, and the day you were born. And a, a great Vedic astrologer can, can give you a, an idea of, of this you know, chunk of time so that you can see what the tendency is to do and be. And as a matter of fact, and this is such an interesting thing, I'm going into Mercury in March. And that's, that's what's called my major dasa. And uh, that's going to be the most powerful time of my life, Pro prolific traveling, writing, speaking, 
um, bigger than I've ever been out there. Isn't that interesting? Now, right now, what I feel right now is that, are you kidding me? No way. But you see, as the planets change, the planets uh, affect our, our own mind because there are planets, right? Each one of us are born with a conjunction that the planets are in at time of birth. And as they move, they affect how we see the world, how we act in the world. And uh, right now I feel like, hey, namaste, I'm kicking back. This is, you know, I'm taking it a lot easier. But, uh, you know, I can feel the train starting to move, as a matter of fact. I, I'm, I'm like starting to move into this bigger field. And it's, uh, you know, life for me is all about let thy will be done. Uh, really, let, let thy will be done. What, whatever you want for me, I want for me. And that is really my mantra is just to, to really surrender to loving what is. Thank you, Byron Katie, for, for her work with my, my wonderful soul, Marishi Maheshogi. I've been meditating since I was 20, and I'm, I'm only 25 now, but you know, it seems like a long time. And uh, yeah, and, and to wonderful friends like you that have wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things that people can use that recenter them as well that, that, that I love. So, you know, I, I, I'm just going to sit back and let the magic carpet take me and see where I go. And it's all good. It's from here on out, it's all good. And it's been all good. And some people might be going, but yeah, but COVID, COVID was tough. People are suffering. People are dying. People are all this. And, you know, one of the things that I've always said, how do you know? that's not an easier path that that when someone leaves this planet i mean if you read anything about life after death if you're into that kind of thing it's not like oh my god they're so depressed they left this no it was like walking into the light i got to leave this body because it wasn't working any longer for me i got to shed this mortal coil so that i could be my unbounded beautiful self so what is there to fear when you start to really understand that at a very deep level? You know, for, for all of us, it's about reframing. Uh, one time I was doing an interview with Tony Robbins and Tony said, Janet, isn't it true that, that when you go through the, the darkest night of the soul, the hardest thing possible that just shatters your whole self, have you noticed that later that's what really made you resolute, that really gave you that inner strength from within? So for all of us, the practice is to reframe and take a look at your story. Some of, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be really straight with you. I was sexually abused when I was 17. Now I could hold that story you know, for the rest of my life and let it ruin you know, wonderful, opportunities and experiences and and my my love for men but i reframed it and i reframed it when i realized okay everything happens for me not to me why did that happen to me i can't do anything about the past past is a past i can only do with what i with what i have right now so what would the reframe be thank you so much for me i am the best coach for any woman that is ever holding any guilt, shame, fear, hatred, just, you know, all of those feelings inside, terrorism from that experience, come to me, come to me. I've been there, but I'll tell you, you don't need to let it ruin your whole life and let that be your story of who you are. That's not why it happened. Everything happens for you, not to you. And so your job is, and all of our job to be back, you know, when, think about it. When you're thinking of all the things that aren't working for you, you're in a world of separation and you walk this planet separate. But when you're thinking of how everything is serving you and really start to take a look at those, those really intense moments, let's be real practical here. The most intense moments, how does it serve you now? And when you can really stop the story 
stop whatever story you've been telling and start to really go within and see how is this made you stronger, greater, more loving, more kind. Then that's when, that's when you can see that every moment is happening for you, not to you, that every moment really is a gift, that God is good, God is everything, and there are no mistakes in the universe, and no one can help you with that. That's your inner work, and if you're here and you really want to be of service to humanity, that's your work in order for you to be the teacher living the teaching. To be the teacher living the teaching takes a lot of desire to, to know the self deeply. And that's why you're on this planet. That's why you're listening to this program. Your soul called you here to hear each one of these, these things that are hitting you, that are hitting you. Not everything, you know, that was like, oh yeah, nice, nice. Okay, whatever. You know, but some of them are going kaboom. Notice those ones that are that are speaking to you. That's nature. That's God. That's higher power. That's the universe. That's that voice that is greater than the self trying to help you. Remember, 80% of what's going on is unseen. And if we could see, we could see that there are so many guides and, and beautiful helpers there for us when we ask for that help. Oh, that's so beautiful. I, I want to just quickly go into a place that'll be kind of fun to wrap, it, wrap this up. Um, Craig and I have a wonderful organic garden here and um, we've had a great season. It's been a beautiful growing season and we've had enough rain and it, it, you know it's been a real blessing. And I go out every morning to, um, to pick you know tomatoes and string beans and sugar snap peas and yellow squash and all this wonderful, wonderful abundance. And I go out there and I go, oh my God, how can you grow so fast? I mean, yesterday these string beans were like this big and now they're like full grown. How did you do that? A, you know, a, a, a zucchini or a yellow squash that was just a little guy, you know, the day before. Now it's like, wow, it's crazy. It's amazing. And so it's become like this practice for me in a way where I go out and I just talk to the plants and thank them. And, and in amazing- <laughs> Of course like, they're growing fast. Oh How can you be so abundant? This is so amazing. So I want you now as we're completing our time together to just bring that into what people can receive now with these reflections, with this self-love, with this gratitude. The mm, I love that. Thank you. Your abundance that's here for us. Yeah, you know, I'll leave you with this practice. When I was in Japan, I met this man many years back named Wahei Takeda. And Wahei was one of the biggest small investor. He invested in small companies and was just a gazillionaire. And Wahei was also awake. And he created this program called Maro Up. Morrow up. Morrow up is all about seeing the good in all things. And he said, there, there, are t there are so many ways to morrow up. It's to be with, be with like-minded people. To, and why we resonated, because one of them was to, to do what moves you. In other words, live your passion. He said, visit spiritual places, vis visit religious, beautiful religious places, because you know, they, it really fills you. You know, when you walk into a temple, you, you know, you feel differently. He said, view beautiful art. And um, he said, to go into nature, as you do, Gail, go into nature, because all of these different, all of these different things that he would say to do, what are they doing? They're reminding us of our nature, that we are that love, that we are that abundance, that we are that, that pure energy. And he said, you can just cut to the chase by just seeing the good and being in gratitude because gratitude is, is love and love is the highest vibration. So, so the practice is to just morrow up and morrow up by, and by the way, I have an ebook. I'm going to, I'm going to ask to have that sent to your community as well. Now that I'm talking about it, it's a really cool book. It's um, written by the Tony Robbins of Japan, Ken Honda. 
and myself. We wrote it about Wahe Tikeda and it explains this whole process. And it's really, it's really just a great ebook and it's gotten incredible. It's probably gotten the best reviews of any book I've ever written, which is, is really very, very cool. So for everyone, Maro up for the next month, you know, make it a practice, write it down, Maro, M-A-R-O, Maro up, to, to remind yourself every day just to take 10 minutes, to, to be conscious, you know, anyone on this call, you're a conscious creator. How do I know when you're on this call? What are we talking about? We're talking about the highest vibration on the planet. You know, you have to be pretty conscious to, to even arrive here. So be conscious about the good that you see in the world. Be conscious, look around you. Thank you for my hands that, that enable me to pick up whatever I need. Thank you for my legs that walk me to wherever I need to walk. You know, tell, do what Gail does. Thank you, dearest plants, for, for growing this delicious organic food that fills my body temple. You know, thank you for my hair that hasn't all fallen out yet. Thank you for my eyes that can see. I mean, how many times have we done that? How many times have we thanked our body? You know, spend 10 minutes thanking your body. Thank you, body, that you're, you're still doing what you do so that I can sit here right now and be with these lovely angels. So this is my practice for all of you. And this is what I want to leave with all of you is to morrow up, morrow up your life so that you really can be the light that you are, the love that you are. And, uh, and, and come to their interviews because I know everybody they're interviewing, my best friend in the whole world, Deborah Poneman. You got to watch her interview. I'm sure she cried. She always tells great stories about her son, Daniel and Deanna. She's fabulous. And uh, you'll love all of their interviews, I'm sure, because they're so filled with love and heart-centered. Do more of that, and that way it'll be effortless. So thanks, you guys. Thank oh, you. Janet, thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. That was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, my honor. Uh, appreciate you so much. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and <laughs> we too. also appreciate all of you, all of you who are, who mm -hmm. are sharing and who have come here for that, you know, for more love and more compassion and more light, and more blessings and more gratitude. Such an opportunity for all of us to recognize that love in each other and to co-create the shift that's happening right now into the world that we're all envisioning. So powerful, powerful time. Thank you for Thank being you here. Thank you so much, dear one. So yeah. much. Love to you all. Thank you, Janet. Okay. And thank <laughs> you. We send our blessings and, and our love. love. Thank you for watching and being a part of the Divine Paradigm co-creation. The time has come for us to work together in co-creative ways with the outcome being greater than any of us could have achieved alone. You make a difference in this important time. So thank you so much. We want to let you know tomorrow there will be another amazing conversation with one of the heartfelt thought leaders who've chosen to be a part of this symposium. Each program is available for 48 hours and all of them can be replayed on Sundays. You'll be receiving an email in your inbox that will take you to the next conversation. So make sure you're getting our emails. Please stay with us and stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun with some powerful messages. The full program takes place six days a week, Monday through Saturday for three weeks. And the full program will also be available at the end for purchase. Keep checking back to the page to enjoy our next conversation. Blessings and, and love. love.